I look forward to seeing how this season's going to unfold. On paper, you know, uh, there's a lot of things to be excited about. Uh, five seniors, the experience that we have, uh, a roster that is healthy and committed to one another. All of our players that sustained injuries last season and had to redshirt are back. And I think for us, it's, you know, growing. It's always been about the process to be able to see how far we can take this. And, and I think as long as we stay in the moment, we stay uh, for each other, I think, you know, great things are going to happen for this team. So this is this is it. This is the uh, ground you've had three great years so far, but this is boom, your senior season. Yeah, it's hard to believe that, you know, it's senior season already. And, um, you know, it's, it's the last one, last chance to, to make, leave your mark and, and just go out with a bang. This is my last media day. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to believe. It's been four years already, and um, it goes by fast. It really does. Over the four years, it's definitely been, especially being a walk-on, that was kind of a, a story in the beginning, but definitely flushed out over the past few years. Not really a big upcoming story or anything like that. And so Alyssa Thomas obviously gets a lot of questions because she is who she is, player of the year. Um, um, all the honors she's getting and um, yeah I do have to search out my own attention but really it's not even that I don't mind I enjoy being here with my team and just um, some of those group photos and stuff like that that's what I really I really enjoy and I'm um, kind of just being myself on the side and if people think that's entertaining and they want to um, make a story out of that or see that I mean I'll obviously open to it. You know we were just talking about that you know freshman year um, you know every year me and Sequoia try to get a picture with each other and, um, you know, freshman year, we, at this time, you know, we really didn't have the friendship that we do now. And, you know, we weren't as, you know, outgoing with the pictures. But, you know, since then, we, we make it our mission to, to get a picture that, you know, we can post and, you know, look back at. You know, posters, I think it'd be serious, you know, trying to scare a few people. But other than that, I think Media Guide should be fun and just showing our personality. Well, today is like one of the first days ever in my life that I decided to wear some makeup. Just because I've noticed on some of the vid video interviews that I have done, my face just looks a little flush and a little more pale. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to put on some lip gloss, make my lips a little bit popping. Mwah. Well, I want to be a broadcast journalist, so I just think it's fun. I love talking and I love communicating, and I think it's really exciting to be able to communicate what you've been doing during preseason, what to expect for the season, just to give people a little tease, and that's what I think Media Day is. The new locker room is fantastic, um, every every inch of it. Um, we did go a while without the graphics and stuff like that, and so to get that um, a few weeks ago has made a huge, huge difference. Um, just really made it our own, really made it Maryland, uh, really honoring the past and the legends um, of Maryland women's basketball. Uh, when I first got here, the locker room, you know, I thought it was the greatest thing coming in, you know, because I've never been in a locker room like that. And then, you know, when they did their PowerPoint to show you, you know, how the locker room was falling apart, it was like, wow, okay, I guess, you know, I didn't notice that because, you know, I was very appreciative of what we had. And then now the locker room that we have is just amazing, you know, basically could live there. It, it has everything that you need. And I also love, as soon as you walk in the locker room, you make a left into our locker room lounge, and you can see our core values on the wall. And I just think, I don't know, I, to me that just screams Maryland pride, and it just looks so good. The huddle and the We Are Maryland uh, written across it, that's my favorite part, just just the, the tight huddle and, and the words of what we represent, what we try to embody every day is really, I like to see that as soon as I walk in. Welcome, uh, what do you think? What do you think? What's your favorite part? I think my favorite part would be the couch. You know, it's an opportunity where we're all able to just gather and, and hang out in that space. The chairs. The chairs we get to sit in now while Coach B talks to us, oh my gosh, I have to make sure that I don't fall asleep. You know any of your other uh, friends or college teammates that have a, a locker room and a lounge like this? take pride in this because it's it blows you away. It's been amazing to see uh, 
how much it's changed and I think that says something about the program as well, where the program was four years ago and the program is now, um, to see that evolution is, um, I think goes along exactly with the locker room. Just want to give a shout out to Karen who does our locker room because it just looks really amazing and you honestly don't want to leave. This is my first time traveling with the University of Maryland and I'm excited for my first game, but it's, it's fast paced and we're always moving. Uh, this season I am our Director of Operations, so I kind of work behind the scenes making sure um, that all the logistics are taken care of with the hotel, with food, uh, getting shoot around organized, kind of everything behind the scenes that you just expect to go correctly. I try to make sure it goes correctly. <laughs> Sammy has your new room keys right here. So you'll get it as you go. Awesome. Thank you. Louie's awesome. She sends us um, messages and tells us where, where to be and everything. She's so on top of everything, and I just love that. She, she keeps us organized, so her job's tough, and she's doing it well. Libby's, Libby's a breath of fresh air. She's done a, a phenomenal job this trip, and uh, I think we're very blessed to, to, and fortunate to keep her in the program. Yesterday when we got to the hotel, people kept telling me that everything was going great. It was a perfect trip, and I just don't want anyone to jinx me until we have everyone's feet down in College Park. We have 31 people traveling, and I want 31 sets of feet back at the Comcast Center before anybody says anything. <laughs> It's a lot to take in because we got off the plane yesterday and then we have shoot around today and then we have a game tonight and then we leave tomorrow so it's just fast paced and it's exciting and I'm excited for my first game but I'm kind of nervous because it's our first game against like a real D1 opponent. Uh, pre game at 3 okay, and then we'll, we'll load the bus and leave by 525. Okay, Good job y'all. Nice Good job. job. Have some fun. Together, Stay three, one, two, three. Together. So she cuts through, she gets it. High snow over the top. Same action. She slips and they throw. Because I just think this year we can have like a really good team and like season if we just focus on each other. So I gotta Well, it's our first official game, and all the hard work that we put in through preseason and during the summer can officially pay off. Traveling doesn't affect us how we play. Every gym is a new gym, and we just gotta play like we know how to play and come together and create our own family and our own energy and create our own environment, and no matter what environment we go into. Uh, we're at the uh, Sun Dome here in Tampa, Florida. Um, I coached there for two years before coming to Maryland. It's my third year at Maryland. My hometown is an hour south in Venice, Florida. And uh, so my parents got to come to every home game and 
and they'll be here tonight, you know, cheering for our Terps. Yeah, I've been, I've been trying not to think about it too much, you know, being that we knew we were going to play them last season, so, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot, and uh, it's, it's difficult because I'm very close with the, the coaching staff still, and the, their, their head coach, Jose Fernandez, does a great job, and I learned a lot. Championship teams love to go on the road. They thrive to go on the road. The best teams I've ever coached, the best teams I've ever coached, are the teams that love to go on the road. Okay, you know why? You know why they love to go on the road? Because they love to go on the road and they love to go crash someone else's party. It takes a different level of toughness to go on the road. A matchup of NCAA tournament teams from last March. Wholesale substitutions for USF early on. Lead feed, Lauren Mincy, layup good. Terrapins in transition once again. Mincy, deep and high left side. Lexi Brown fakes a three. Top of the key, shot up and in. Lexi Brown has five, and the Terrapins lead 9-4. Brown, launches a three, count it! What an exclamation point to end the first half for Maryland. You now know what the next 20 minutes is going to look like. All right, it's going to look like the first 20 minutes. Welcome the fact that we have nobody in foul trouble. All right, everybody came ready to play. So we made a decision to get more aggressive. Renee Mosley into the front court, takes it up, lays it up, it's good. Maryland ranked in the top 10 by both polls. South Florida receiving votes by both polls. Walker Kimbrough, three, count it. The pass right side down underneath, Rihanna Jones connects. Ball game final score, Maryland wins 78-7. Tonight is about you all, and tonight is about the trust that you've got to be able to have. We're going to be comfortable being uncomfortable tonight because that's how you know a team trusts each other. I don't know about you, all right, but, but right now it feels like mm, you're just kind of, you know, just trying to measure up to see if you can play with them. We didn't come out to play this game for a moral victory. We're not coming into this locker room after this game for a moral victory. We came in here because we talked about playing with confidence. Some of you didn't play with confidence in the first half. You got to come out and you got to know. You gotta know that you can play with them and you gotta know that you can win this game because you can. Again, 
thank them for telling us on November 15th, this wasn't our Super Bowl today. Okay, yeah, we wanted to play a lot better, but this is November 15th, third game of the season. Okay, and, and yeah, they were physical, the number one team in the country for a reason. I think it's a great opportunity. It definitely tests you as a player. It's really early in the season. We can only go off from here. We can't let this bring us down, and we just gotta learn from what we went through and come together as a team. Well, as a mom, I mean, it is a game, and it's a huge learning experience for all the girls that are out there playing. And they just need to know that no matter what, like, we're proud of them and we love them all. You're here to play basketball, and yes, you're upset when you lose, but you gotta remember that people are here to watch you and support you and be there for you. Like, coming out here and seeing all the people and all the fans, it just, it makes the loss a lot easier. Everything that we do is an opportunity. Every time you guys step out on the court, kind of like what you just said before about you don't know if you have another opportunity in some ways, there's nothing that's guaranteed. Get that mindset that says, remember in the beginning, that I want to succeed more than I'm scared to fail. This season, we've added another dimension to our team and to our program uh, with Stu Singer. He's a life skills coach, uh, you know, really helps us from a sports performance, psyche, end of the game. I, I work um, under an approach um, which is called cognitive behavioral, which is that our, that our mind, our thoughts control our behavior. DNA, our parents passed down to us great things and they pass down to us potentially some things that aren't that, that, that great for us. And, uh, and then also the environment that we grew up in and the messages that we got from teachers, coaches, parents, friends, you know, teammates, anything. And all those things become who we are. He can also individually you know, help a, a player if they're struggling in a certain area, if it's confidence, if it's fear of failure, uh, you know, just that whole psyche, the, the, the mental process of, you know, what we put ourselves through. What we pay attention to tends to grow. If we pay attention to getting better in practice, you're going to get better in practice. But if we tend to think about what if we don't do this, that's what your, that's where your attention is. That to me was huge when he was talking to us about that because I was like, oh my God, like that's exactly what I do. Like for me, example, when we played against Duke and I had nine turnovers, what was I focusing on each and every play? How I had turned the ball over and I was focusing on not turning it over. The more you focus on turnovers, then you're, gonna, you're more likely to turn it over. The power that I hope that, that we get over time is that instead of it taking a whole game and being, I was, I was gone, I lost, you know, I lost that focus, that it might take five minutes, then it might take 30 seconds until those old habits become new habits. Our players love seeing Stu. Uh, different players have shared with me, you know, just, you know, how much he's bringing to the table for them, and you can just see a direct correlation to the basketball court. You have to be aware of what you're doing first. And a lot of times we're not, because going back to that habitual response is that we don't even know we're doing it because it's habit. We don't even realize that it's happening. We actually kind of figure out what are the, some of the things that, that we do that don't help us. And they're actually kind of faulty. There's no real strong logic that leads us there. And then once we recognize those things, then we can restructure the thoughts so that we move them in the direction that we want. Well, look what you guys have on. Football players, they, nobody even sees their face. When you're a basketball player, there are people on the sidelines 10 feet from you, and you're wearing tank top and shorts. There's nowhere to hide in basketball. And so one of the things that you say is that, yes, I am being judged. And bring it on. Because whoever's judging you nine times out of 10 is scared to be inside those lines. So they're judging you. <laughs> they're, they're judging you, but you're the ones putting yourself out there. Brenda wants to be on, on the front end of the curve. She doesn't want to wait till somebody else does it and then be behind the curve. She wants this program to be um, forward thinking. One of the things is I hope that I make the experience better for the players. I, I want them to be here and say, this is an amazing environment and uh, this is an amazing opportunity. And you know, I, I look forward to it and looking forward to kind of helping them 
make that transition and continue that transition. We were fortunate to be able to have President Obama uh, come to our men's game uh, when they played Oregon State. Uh, but it took about a week leading up to uh, the events that uh, we were going to be able to host him and his family in our locker room. The day he was coming, we were like, we should leave him a note. And they're like, no, he's not going to read your note. I was like, no, I'm going to write the note on the board. So I wrote it big, so he made sure he saw it. And then we um, left a poster for the girls. We all signed it. They didn't take that. But when, um, Bo, I think it was Bones or Sequoia, they left, um, they texted us in our group text and told us and sent us a picture of Obama's response and I almost like threw my phone in the air. That's like so exciting that the president like responded to my note and that, that was really cool. He, um, I didn't even think that he was going to even go back into our actual locker room. We thought he was just going to stay in the lounge area, but I texted my mom and my dad and I was like, oh my God, Obama, he, he responded to my note. He wrote us a note and then Michelle and her daughters wrote us a note so to actually come and like utilize our space and just like leave a note. It just, it's kind of crazy. I think they want to frame it. Uh, this is actually the whiteboard that used to be attached to our um, TV cabinet in our locker room. But right now it is being hidden in my office, hopefully where no one can touch it or find it or know that it's even interesting. Um, so now we have taken it off of the TV cabinet so it's safely in here. Um, we're going to find a way to somehow get it framed and hopefully get it put up somewhere where more people can see it than just us. Because so many people have access to this board, we write all kinds of nonsense on it all the time. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we could preserve it. Um, so we kind of took it off, took all the hinges off as soon as we could. Definitely keep it safe so we can figure out our next move for it. This is where we're keeping the Michelle Obama signed poster. You guys are the first to see it, I was hiding it from everybody. I'm the keeper of the presidential stuff, so it's an honor to have it in here at least for a little while until we figure out our next move with it. <laughs>